So the issue of the use of the word sentence, again, what we are seeing here, what's being demonstrated, is multiple meanings of the one word. Yes. Yes. Correct. Now, in hidden in plain sight, would you agree? Absolutely, all the time. You see, we've never been shown this. We've never been told this. And they taught us different interpretations, different ways to write. As an example, all writing initially in the older languages and in the Eastern languages, all writing was usually done by the left hand. And the reason was that they would write from the right to the left. Yes. And they would write from the bottom upwards. Yes. And this is why in legislation and in Wikipedia and everywhere you do research, if you're looking for something, you go to the very last paragraph of whatever document you're busy working with. And the key of what you're researching will be at the end of the document not somewhere in the beginning and not somewhere in the middle because they have used and constructed documents and constructed sentences in such a way to tell us everything that we need to know but the time that you're getting to the bottom of page 15 you've been indoctrinated with so many terminologies and things and whatever to deviate you off what you were actually really looking for and the exit clause is always at the end and then that's that so in research and in, in encyclopedias and in dictionaries everywhere they've been doing this all the time now obviously the question is who are they um, they are the ones that we created by buying their brands uh, going to their schools consenting to their authority over us and we didn't have much of a choice up to now uh, now that we know more we can change it and we can we can uh, rescind the contracts and withdraw the consent and take control of our own lives so yeah, with the, with the sentencing, uh, when you construct the sentence, there's terms and conditions on any couple of words that you combine because it's open to the interpretation of that sentence. Uh, as an idea, I might write down a sentence in, just in a, in a role-play game in which I want you to run around this building 15 times every morning. And you might, if you're an athlete, think, oh, this is absolutely bloody brilliant. You know, it's not a problem whatsoever. But if you're in a wheelchair, that would be a really unfair thing to expect from you. You see, and this is this is what I'm saying with the terms and conditions. They have to be clear. And this is where the deception of language come in. Now we're sitting at a point where they tell us we need to run 15 flippant times around the house. And some of us are in wheelchairs, some of us have only got one leg, some of us are athletes, and we're all bound by the same thing, which is what happened. So yeah, we've deviated slightly off, off the name. But in essence, nobody can give a name to anybody else. Because once you've done that, it was your intellectual property that you owned for the time while you're on earth, that, that is used by which you can be called. You may call me by that name, that's totally okay, but I do not give you my name. Because when I do that, I don't have my own. And then I'm nothing and nobody. Which is what they do in court. When they do the role play in court, the, the magistrate asks you, what's your name? And you say, what's your name? And then they are skin crawlers. And they crawl into your side of it, and then he becomes you and you becomes him. And this is the, the role reversal that they do. This is how the courts work. Now, obviously, you, you must never be in a court as a living entity. You can't be in a court. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that at some point in time. But essentially, the name is that critical that once you once they know your name, you're screwed. It's over. It's done. Because you've given your name away. And you didn't have the right to do that. Now, it's also why on the planet, as far as I know so far, and I, I don't speak extraterrestrial languages. I don't know what's happening in the rest of the universe. But there is no law yet on the planet that says that you must have a name whatsoever. And there's no law whatsoever that says that you must have a surname or so, a second name. So they would, for example, contract with you or deceive you, whatever terminology you choose yeah. to use. From that point of time, that early point in time when you're born, before you're capable of making your own decisions... You might be here, but you're not exactly with it, so That's to right. speak. Yeah. Yeah. So this does, in fact, come back to the birth certificate being yes. that trap at yes. an early point in time. That's correct, yeah. That's correct. So in my, my particular case, when, when I was born in, uh, in Africa, in a country at that point in time known as Northern Rhodesia, which later became Zambia, it was a British colony. And at that point in time, obviously, what parents would normally do after a child is born, now, born again, when I say born, I mean live born. Yes. The, the mother bore the baby and it, it, it got born through life, being live born, not birthed. 
because birthing is shipping terminology. And this is another deceptive word. When I say birth, how do I spell the word? Is it B-I-R-T-H or B-E-R-T-H? How do you know when I use the word? What is your date of birth? There may be an assumption on the part of the listener. Yeah. Obviously, B E R T H is what you think is maritime. Yeah. And yeah. and B I R T H refers to Correct. a child leaving yeah. its mother's surrogacy. That's good. Yeah. But but you don't know when they ask you over the phone for any security question and blah blah, which they do all the time. What is your date of birth? They're talking about the shipping term. They're talking about the birthing term. And the date of birth was only when the name got registered and the name got given out to the system and got recorded. And that's the interesting about the terminology using birth. We, we should be using the, ter the term born all the time. But what's very interesting, the mother obviously having given, uh, uh, you know, having a life born baby in hospital after what she's gone through, um, she's filling in forms, they're taking temperature, they're taking blood samples from the baby, they're doing vaccinations. And at that stage, she's not really in a competent position to do important shipment on documents. But they do that because there's records in the hospital. Now, those hospital records get created into a bond. And they're normally sold to either government entities or they're sold to the Vatican. That is the hospital records. Now, what a lot of people don't know, all maternity hospitals are foundling hospitals. Foundling hospitals. Yes, foundling means a place where abandoned goods go to to be discarded. At which point somebody else can take ownership. Correct. That's what you're driving at. Absolutely. So the child gets born, life born, and taken by the doctor. The doctor being the guy that works for the shipping company. Which dock does he represent? And he takes the baby out of the water and holds it up so that it can't touch land and puts it into maritime and therefore it becomes abandoned goods to separate it away from the mother and then give it back again to the mother so that there's no bond. This is what happens in maternity hospitals. Now obviously it's a maternity ward and a ward is a, isn't it like a prison term? Were you in a prison ward? <laughs> well you could be a ward of the state. Correct. And that this is what happens. So by the time it gets to the documentation, that whole scenario has played itself out to where the child becomes abandoned goods. And that gets claimed and that gets recorded. And that record gets sold and gets monetized as goods abandoned and taken by somebody that gave it up and left it behind. When you say the document becomes monetized... Hospital record. Is there a name for that process or procedure? That would be the, the, the hospital record. That would be the hospital record. Very often they will give the, the, the parents a copy of it. And of course they want that copy and they want those things. Or they either get it from the hospital or from the parents when you go and you register the child. Now of course what nobody knew, especially with, with uh, the older generation and our parents as well. Registering anything means it's not yours anymore. Yes. Absolutely. Anything that's registered is, is it's good by ownership, it's not yours. You get the license to use it and you become the holder and the, 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 the looking after that item by law, but not universal law, by legality. You are the holder, not the owner? Correct, correct. So once the child is registered, the parents are just the custodians looking after the child. It's not their child anymore. And this is what happens with birth registration. So the hospital bond gets created, that gets monetized and get, that gets bought and sold to, to usually the Vatican or some government entity that buys that and they trade upon it and then again the records that's been made with a live born um, nobody's claimed that baby, nobody gave the baby a name, nobody said no, 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 I'm not filling in a form and the way that the forms are filled in is, is putting the name into form and that has been done deceptively as well using terminologies and the way that it's been written on the documents in italics, in bold, in blocks, in different things that were ticked off. It's something that's pre-filled in. It's not a blank sheet of paper that the mother starts to write out. So it's built and designed as an entrapment so that the way that it's filled in on that form, the mother has discarded this, this the child because she doesn't know about the four corner rule and how to do English grammar properly and how to construct sentences and she just filled in the blocks. 
and usually there's often a block where there's a little cross where you're supposed to fill in stuff. The cross means dead, it's been crossed out. Yes. Now, strangely enough, within the system, if you would go to uh, the, the government entities and you would look at records of hospitals uh, and records of births, deaths and marriages and death certificates, you will see that this birth certificate and the death certificate has got the exact same number. Interesting. So they issue the death certificate at birth. Yes. Because they created a dead entity in maritime and that is what happened. And that very same certificate stays with you throughout your life and becomes your death certificate. It's the identical same certificate. And if this is not true, why would the certificates have the exact same number?